and welcome back. It's now five minutes away from seven o'clock and uh, we're making a little switch in terms of our programming. We're going to start off our conversations today with uh, the president of the BBF and the commissioner of the NEDL to talk about the commencement of the second National Elite Basketball League season. We have with us Paul Thompson and we also have Kareem Juan. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. gentlemen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, the second season already. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the lessons from season one and uh, perhaps how you envision this season being uh, different, if at all. Yes. Uh, this season came up upon us uh, very quickly. Uh, <laughs> last season, I thought, uh, went fairly well. Uh, we had coverage from Channel 5 mm -hmm. with one game showing live per weekend, which was a big, uh, I believe, a big hit. Um, the first year, uh, I believe, was a, you know, we had some growing pains. Yeah. And I believe all of the teams, it was new to all of them. And so teams are responsible to uh, take care of their own marketing and their own, you know, uh, administration of their teams. Um, I believe that this year that, that will be improved upon. Um, we see teams, you know, doing flyers and doing their Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, last year we had one or two teams doing that. This year all of the teams are doing that. Um, all the teams have strengthened um, in terms of administration and so we believe that we can, you know, we know what the problems are in terms of moving around uh, officials and stuff. Um, so this year we have a, an idea of what we have to face in terms of our challenges. So. Uh, uh, improving it won't be, you know, a surprise. Yeah. Uh, maybe Mr. Commissioner can... <laughs> 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 Mr. <laughs> Commissioner. <laughs> yes, just to add to what Paul said, I think one of our greatest strengths is now that we have a year of experience under mm -hmm. our belts, not administratively and also from each team's perspective. Mm -hmm. So at our, prev at our meetings, I've noticed that we've grown administratively. Our capacity has increased. Each team now understands what it is to manage a basketball team at this level. And so I'm sure the experience from last year will carry over. All, all teams from last year has the same management team this year, just a few members more, mm -hmm. and we only have one new franchise. So, so I'm sure that, that the experience from last year will carry over to this season. And it was positive enough to return. Let's, let's talk about, I mean, when, we, when NEBL kicked off last year, we talked about how um, this was an opportunity to really return basketball uh, to, the, to, the, to the overwhelming response it used to have before. And really and truly by the end of the season, especially uh, with the Western Ballers and, and their crew, there was an overwhelming support. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the things that you think uh, had really helped to achieve that particular goal. Um, yes, basketball was dormant a few years prior to the season last year. Um, I think Belize was always a basketball fan base. I yeah. think there just wasn't any opportunity for basketball to, to blossom in the country. And I think one thing that contributed significantly to last year's success was we had a lot of young players in the league. We still have a lot of young players in the league. And there was this mesh between the young players and the older players who, who were once the face of basketball. Mm -hmm. So I think people appreciated that and are still appreciating that transition between the new faces and, and the old faces still blending. Of course, with social media and everything, it's far easier to promote basketball, to promote any event. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure that also contributed. I'm sure um, the, the weekly coverage from Channel 5 played a huge role. I think that was one of the biggest factors of last year's success that mm -hmm. a game was televised live every weekend. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when you talk about the formula uh, for the teams themselves and that mesh of old faces and newer faces, um, let's talk about that. Has it morphed uh, this year in terms of the percentages that were expected and why or why not? I think it, it has, I think what, what has changed or what is changing is the roles of the, the, the older player. I think the, the older players are recognizing their roles now as mentors. I've, I, I listened to a talk show last, last week where I heard, heard them speak about that. So it's, 
the, the older players are still able to compete at that level, but I think they're, they're also accepting the responsibility that in a few years it's time to transition to, to, the, um, to our younger players. Part of the bylaws stipulates that each team has to have at least six players 26 years or younger to, to ensure that there is a smooth transition. And, and I think it, it, it's working smoothly so far. Now, I, I found that extremely interesting because you'd think, uh, given the fact that there's one team per district or yes. the area that y you're working, that it would be natural that they would choose the best players, not necessarily based on age. Um, and when I saw that stipulation, that was, that was interesting. I know there are a lot of young and upcoming players, but uh, to get the dynamics on the teams themselves and have that selection process, uh, what other uh, stipulations you thought were necessary um, at the league's inception to make sure that it worked? Um, well, well me, that was the main point. And what something that was crucial, I think, because semi -pro, when Semi Pro was was um, in existence, it was more Belize based, and not all the tongues had a Semi Pro team. So, as in the case with San Ignacio and Cayo Western Ballas, it's not like we had a lot of quote unquote big names who reside in San Ignacio who wanted to play with that team. So, we did have a lot of um, young local players who wanted to be a part of the team. I think the same thing applies to Dangriga and Corozal and PG, that, that there wasn't as much exposure to semi pro as in local players who were participating in semi pro. So, so the dynamic was, it was. For, for, for Kaya, who I could speak about, it was more an, a natural selection of local players and, and, and s probably just blending in or, imp or getting in a few experienced players to help the younger players. So in, in San Ignacio, and I assume in some of the other districts, there wasn't so much a demand at these experienced players who wanted to make the team. I assume that challenge was more complicated in Belize City where semi-pro was, was, was based. Well, one of the, the objectives of uh, taking this league um, and the vision that we had to take the league nationally was to try to duplicate what, what it is we had in Belize City. Mm -hmm. You guys are very familiar with how it was in the early yeah. 90s and how, you know, how big that whole scene was. Um, we were very excited from the league's perspective, from the federation perspective, that uh, a municipality like San Ignacio and Cayo uh, kind of did that same thing. Um, it was overwhelming, I think, for that area and, and to see what, what happened in just one year. Mm -hmm. um, these other municipalities, uh, I believe, looked at that and when they went there to play their away game, you know, were shocked and happily surprised. You know, it was a, it was a beautiful environment. Yeah. Um, now, we want to expand this. Um, expand this to, let's say, Belmopan. We see Belmopan looking very strong this year. Mm -hmm. um, Dangriga had always been very, you know, very good. Um, and so, you know, San Pedro was the winner uh, last mm -hmm. year, and, 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 and it's just a matter of doing the right marketing to make that atmosphere be everywhere and to really have, you know, home teams. Yeah. I, I asked the, the previous <coughs> question because one of the things that uh, they had done with semi-pro basketball was actually allow international imports. Yes, yes. We didn't go that route this yes. time around, yes. or we do. Last, uh, last year, each team was allowed one, mm -hmm. one international import, and that, yes. that remains in place for this season as well. Yeah. Yes. And many of them were Belizean-Americans that they brought yeah. in as yes. well. Yes, yes. yes. This so year, that was nice. This, yeah. this year, we do have a few of those coming. Okay. Um, I know that uh, San Pedro is supposed to bring a 6'9 guy out of Baltimore, Maryland. Oh. Um, uh, the Belize, the new Belize City team, which the name of the team is Belize Hurricanes, is bringing a 6'8 uh, <laughs> man out of Los Angeles. Wow. Um, I believe Belmont Pan also has a 6'2 point guard that's coming from, I'm not sure which state he's coming from. Yeah. Um, so they're doing their recruiting yes, as well. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Everybody's trying to strengthen up. Um, now, looking at the, the lessons, you said there were obviously some growing pains uh, that you experienced last season. Yes. Uh, what are the particular changes you're making this season to ensure uh, that it can run as smoothly as possible? Administratively, from the league's position, one, one challenge was getting officials to all the venues. Um, mm -hmm. We... It, 
the issue, we were okay with the referees, but we had challenges with the table officials simply because um, we did not have at that time enough trained personnel to, to, mm -hmm. do the, um, to do the, the um, different functions at the scorer's table. We have, we have what we call live stats, which is the live um, show of the game as it's happening. It's live on the, on the web. So we did tr some training last year, but I think we only have had about three or four people who could have done that on the laptop. So now we, we did additional training this, this um, last month, and so now we have a bigger base to, 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 to draw from to ensure that we have enough table officials. So that was one of our challenges to ensure that we had had officials at each game. Mm -hmm. uh, and to add to, add to this, uh, that's a very new program, and that's a program that's being used. We are one of the first to use it in the world, actually, um, where while the game is going on, um, you can follow the game online. Uh, uh, so, the, the, as he said, the personnel, we only had three, and the, I believe that the teams and their administrative team were not aware of the impact of this program. Mm -hmm. This program is, uh, you know, very very high high level and uh, I believe that now that this what they saw what that program did meaning you could get you know player statistics you can follow the game while it's going on uh, me the media can review it without having to call the administrative office and say well what was the score there mm -hmm. you know you can go online you can check it players can go and check it fans can go and check it I mean last year uh, when we started out in February um, by the end of February that uh, the program also gives us the number of hits that we get mm -hmm. and we had close to 17,000 hits after the first month um, that's we thought that was excellent yeah. it, that helps with us going out and trying to market the league in general and so we can get more sponsorship mm -hmm. um, so that was very helpful this year um, again Belize Bank is a corporate sponsor and they have they, they are giving again the twenty thousand dollars for the uh, I guess we, we're deciding whether or not that will be the first place prize. Um, mm -hmm. But one of the reasons that they continued was because we were able to go to them and say, look at the statistics of, <coughs> at least from the website point of view. Yeah. Um, you know, and we hope that this can grow. We know that the younger generation, uh, they are into more technology and they can look at their phones and you could up on the bus or you could in your car. Well, not driving. <laughs> and, and as a, a passenger. <laughs> yes, as a passenger and be monitoring the game yeah. and other teams while they are not playing, they can monitor a game, you know, at a, in another district. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's a very powerful tool that we have, and we hope to improve on that. Um, we believe that teams know what the impact will be of, of having uh, personnel to do this. So, doing that training was a was a crucial thing, I believe. Yeah. You also had a very heavy emphasis on uh, uh, discipline and the, the code of conduct of the players. There were some challenges. Um, what has been the approach this time around in terms of having the players understand that there's a certain type of behavior that is expected from them as a, a part of the NEBL? I think it's from, from last season, I think it's a new culture in basketball that we're trying to to mm. instill in, in players, coaches, that, that we will raise the bar in regards to discipline and sportsmanship. We want the games to be a, a family event, not just males or males going out and watch, watching a mm. sport. We want it, we're promoting the NEBL as a family event. It's a game and there's also games within the games. There's entertainment for children, there's entertainment for for, for, for everybody that goes to the game and on that premise we, we, we are very strict with, with, with our discipline, with, we have a um, tribunal, um, some guidelines that, that players are aware of, teams are aware of, that, that we expect them to carry themselves professionally and our, our, um, our mantra is that we, we have a product that we need to sell and we need to ensure that each, each stakeholder plays their part, especially the players and the coaches who are visible and are at the forefront. Mm -hmm. So when, when you talk about the implementation of uh, especially uh, guidelines in terms of behavior off and on the court, how is that managed by the league and how difficult is it uh, to actually monitor so many things? The greatest challenge is the subjectivity of, of instilling punishments given that each yes. scenario is unique. But the BBF has a um, tribunal that, that sets out guidelines for as detailed as possible for majority of the infractions that would occur on the court. And the referees are in charge of writing reports at the end of games. And so they are 
our objective party to, to, to send in the reports. After that, the league follows up. We, we form each time someone would be sanctioned. We have a disciplinary committee, so it's not just one person who is instilling the sanction. We have due process. The players can appeal. And then there's a separate appeal committee. So we, we, as much as we want to ensure discipline, we also give the players or the parties involved um, due process that, that everything seems fair for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you said in your first response was uh, the addition of uh, an, uh, one yes. other team. Which team and why did the league feel the need to add? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, the, the team that, uh, the new team uh, that's on board is called the Belize Hurricanes, and that's out of Belize City. Um, obviously, Belize City is the biggest municipality in terms of population, and we believe that we wanted to give, uh, you know, the pool of players a, a, a little bit more chance and opportunity to, to make a team. Um, the, the administration of the team comprises of, I'm sure you guys know, Gilbert Gordon, mm -hmm. who was the administrator for uh, the IBL. Mm -hmm. um, so we believe that with their experience and their history that they would be able to do a good job in terms of not only the product that they have on the court, but you know, marketing in general, what mm -hmm. Karim just mentioned about having this be a family, you know, have a, a family event. Now, as you talk about it being a family event, mm -hmm. uh, the whole idea of infrastructure is still a, a challenge. How are, we, how are we going to handle that uh, district uh, to district? That's, that's, that continues to be our, I, in my mind, the biggest challenge. Um, in Belize City, I know this new team has somehow gotten uh, permission to use the Belize Elementary um, Auditorium. Uh, that's excellent because you know it has a cover. You know it can rain and you can, can still play. Yeah. So that Probably would be their home. Court. Yes, the challenge with that is it's very small, mm -hmm. and so cozy. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well <laughs> putting it up. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. In terms of the team, you know they try to re to get as much revenue as possible, so that there's a limit there. Mm -hmm. um, in the other districts, uh, in Dangriga, I know that uh, they're changing their venue from why not to ecumenical. Um, and I know they have a roof as well. So there, there's some improvement there. Um, the challenges come in at, uh, in Punta Gorda. PG. Yes, um, you know. Yes. Yes. And, and we have another team in Belize City that, you know, they were scheduled to, to play. They wanted to play out at the Belama Park. I, I think they're still grappling with their exact venue of where they're going to go. They're trying to get elementary as well. There's always, you know, Bird's Isle, but that's not, you know, uh, weather, weatherproof. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that, that's a big challenge, and that's something that not, is not necessarily uh, in our hands and, and we have control over. But I believe mm -hmm. that, you know, at this point, you can't say, oh, we don't have any place to play, so we won't have any season. I mean, I know from experience that the years pass, and... And right now, I would try to get back some of those years. So we want to give people an mm -hmm. opportunity to play wherever it is. Yeah. Wherever it is. Yeah. So PG to. and Belize City are the two areas in terms of uh, the difficulty with facilities. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it, w what has the engagement been like with the sports uh, council and the uh, the government department? Um, well, this is a w the federation is autonomous. Yeah. And so w that relationship is well. We would want to have use of these some of yeah. these facilities and and that's okay so far i know that the teams particularly work with their particular district okay um you know in belize city it's a matter of you know where you want to go i know one of the teams as i said went to belize elementary and they did their own negotiations mm -hmm. um, teams do their <laughs> own negotiations with their particular municipality yeah. to try to get that when there are challenges you know then they call and say well maybe you you guys can put in a word here but uh, more, more than often, that's what happens. So the individual teams have been getting uh, very good support this year? It seems like most teams are doing better financially. They are getting more sponsors. I mm -hmm. assume sponsors wanted to see the product established. Yeah. And so I know teams are doing better financially product-wise. They're also promoting their teams better. So I, I've also seen on Facebook that a lot of teams are assuming greater financial responsibility. They are doing different fundraising mm -hmm. initiatives. Um, I am sure publicity has skyrocketed this year. Most teams have a Facebook page mm -hmm. that's, that's extremely active. 
um, they, they're purchasing um, fan shirts, they're doing deals on tickets. They're, so most teams are far more organized, far more experienced this season as compared to last season. And I'm sure that will have a big impact on the fan base for this, this season. Now, when you think about uh, basketball and the, nat the natural and national pool that it has, um, what would you say is the, the, what you attribute that love affair um, with for um, basketball for Belize? Um, I think that, um, for one, it's an easy sport. Uh, you need a ball, uh, concrete, sand, uh, bucket, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's easy. Um, two, uh, we have, uh, some people may say not good, uh, we have the ability to watch all college games, high school games, the NBA. Um, we have grown up with this now. Um, this generation know nothing else. Um, and so, you know, I think that just by seeing the highest level of basketball in the world play on a daily basis um, contributes to uh, the, the popularity. Um, and we have had a you know, fairly successful over the years. Uh, the Federation has implemented some uh, youth program mm -hmm. nationally. Um, this past November, we went to uh, Panama uh, to participate in the Cocaba U16, uh, which we placed fourth out of eighth. Mm -hmm. So there, you know, there are several reasons why it's grown and why it's, it, it's, that, it's this yeah. popular. Maybe Karim can add, add to that. No, I think one of the biggest factors is, is access to to, to the um, NBN, seeing seeing it, I think that that um, contributes to the passion our Belizeans have. Yeah. Plus, a lot of plus semi pro was extremely powerful back back in the days, and there's still a lot of basketball enthusiasts who who wants to see that return. Yeah. Now, as Commissioner um, Karim, uh, what would you say is the vision that you're you're hoping will be a part of uh, the NEBL and your tenure? For this season, my greatest my greatest goal is to is to solidify what we started last season, as opposed to trying to expand beyond our capacity. There's always a lot more things that could can be done, but I think this season is crucial to allow teams to 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 master and to develop the capacity to administrate well, and I think that will create the foundation for us to build in for for the next two three years. Um, there's so much more that can be done, and for this year, the only change or the only new thing I, I'll, I am envisioning is we'll have an All-Star Weekend that, that from last year people were asking mm -hmm. about. So we'll have an All-Star Weekend, we'll have a slam dunk contest, and we'll have a three-point shootout. Mm -hmm. so, so for this season, that's all I want to implement, but farther down, you have uh, where players could be traded during the season, you have salary caps, you have a, a lot of different things that could be implemented, but I think but at this time mm -hmm. we don't have the capacity administratively to get all of that done. So, so you want to perfect your product now before you yes, move into expansion? Yes, so I think expansion. this season is for that, for teams to get a good hold of what it is to manage a team mm -hmm. properly, and from there we could build. But I think building now would, would be detrimental to the league, yeah. to, to, to stretch beyond our capacity. So let's talk schedules. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the season starts, kicks off this weekend, mm -hmm. this Friday in San Ignacio. Um, Kyle will be playing the new Belize Hurricanes in San Ignacio at the Sacred Heart Auditorium. Mm -hmm. So we believe that's, you know, that last year was for, for, for Kyle Western Bowlers, uh, I believe we could consider that a success story. And so we hope that it starts with a bang there. Um, on Saturday, uh, I know that uh, the Belize City No Limit team will be traveling to Dangriga to play at the Ecumenical, mm -hmm. um, and Belmopan will be playing San Pedro. That, that's going to be a very uh, good game as well, I believe, just from looking at the rosters. Um, mm -hmm. And then the fourth game is which one? So San Pedro will be in Belmopan um, Saturday, yeah, and yes. then PG, Toledo Diplomats, will yes. be traveling to Orange Walk. Orange Walk, mm -hmm. yes. All you, uh, sorry, Belmopan plays their home games on Thursday night. So all Thursday night games are at 8, Friday night games are at 9, and all Saturday night games are at 8 also. And obviously, uh, Channel 5 will be showing the opening night game in San Ignacio yes. this Friday. So tune in if you can make it, make mm -hmm. that drive to San Ignacio. 
and uh, we get to see the new Belize City team. So Belize City residents have to choose between No Limits and Hurricane. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You can, you can have, you know, you can be one of both. <laughs> no, you, you can. No, you, can. You, you have to be loyal. <laughs> Loyalty is important. Yes, 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 yes. So. <laughs> Well, go check out two of them and then you make that's, a decision. That's a good After the point, season, yeah. you can decide. Well, Maybe I can decide based on their color scheme, right? Yeah. Which <laughs> colors <laughs> will look better when I'm wearing <laughs> Kidding. Yes. No, but that's, that's good to, to really get the energy going. And from what we saw, Belize City was really um, not as strong as the rest of the country when it came to, to support for the games yes. being hosted here. Um, and it could be for several reasons. But I think that uh, we definitely need to, to get behind our yes. Belize City teams. Yes. Right. Well, uh, gentlemen, we want to thank you both for joining us this morning and wish you the best with uh, this season mm -hmm. as it continues to grow. Any final words? Leave it to I want to thank you all for having us over this morning. And I want to, thank, I want to invite all fans countrywide to come out, find your team, support your team, even... If you're not a basketball fan as yet, this is where to start. This, the, and that's, that's, what we'll, that's what I think the community in San Ignacio learned last year, that at the end of the season, we had, I think half of our fans were new fans who came out, who, who got to understand what basketball is, and who got to find out who their basketball stars are locally. And so I want to invite everyone out, go support your team. Every time you go to a game, you're supporting your team financially. And, mm -hmm. and it's a great experience. Teams are now incorporating halftime shows and different ter entertainment. So I invite you all to, to chip in and help your local team. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us. Okay. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And we'll return very shortly with our conversation this time around with Kobeck. Don't go anywhere. Open Your Eyes continues after these messages.